All right. So there are a few questions that we get asked about launching e-learning content, and I'm going to answer these for you today. Firstly, what does it mean to launch e-learning content? So this happens when a learning provider, such as an LMS, provides users with access to content, which might be via a link. Users then access this content, and the content itself uses the XAPI, rather than the learning provider using the XAPI. But why would the content want to do that anyway? By using the XAPI itself, many learning providers can easily reuse the content without having to also design and implement the XAPI integrations that are specific to that content. Instead, the XAPI integrations are usually implemented by an authoring tool like Adapt or Storyline. This is important to avoid vendor lock-in. For example, if you decided to change learning provider, you can still use your existing content without losing the valuable XAPI integrations that might provide you with reporting and analysis. So how does the content use the XAPI? Whilst the content can attempt to use the XAPI itself, there is still some work for the learning provider in order to provide the XAPI enabled content. The learning provider usually needs to provide the content with the following details. Firstly, the XAPI actor. This is the user that has launched the content. Secondly, the XAPI context. This is where the content has been launched. So it might be in a course, for example. And finally, it needs to provide the LRS connection details, which typically includes an endpoint for the LRS and the authentication details. So once the content has been provided with these details, it can use the XAPI just like anything else. Sometimes these details are usually packaged into the content, perhaps via a JSON file, but often these may be passed by URL parameters, as you can see now. There are, however, some security issues to be aware of, like providing the authorization details via the URL parameters, probably not a good idea. To resolve this issue, the ADL created the XAPI launch algorithm. The algorithm ensures that the content does not receive direct access to the LRS, and it enforces some restrictions on the XAPI integrations. So instead of connecting directly to the LRS, content instead connects to a launch server using a temporary access token. These temporary access tokens are restricted to allowing statements for a specific actor that the learning provider specifies. So if you're a learning provider, you probably want to know how you actually use the launch algorithm. There are essentially three steps for the learning provider. Firstly, the learning provider needs to receive a HTTP request to launch the content from a user's browser. Following this, the learning provider then sends a HTTP request to create a launch on the launch server. The launch server will respond to that HTTP request with a temporary access token. When creating the launch, the learning provider also provides the XAPI actor and context to be used in the statements. Finally, the learning provider redirects the user to the launch content and provides the launch server endpoint and access token in the URL parameters. So at this point, the learning provider is done. What about the content? How does the content use the launch algorithm? When the content is initially opened in the browser, it needs to send a HTTP request to initialize the launch on the launch server. Otherwise, it can't do anything. It can't send any statements. This HTTP request needs to utilize the launch server endpoint and access token that were provided in the URL parameters by the learning provider. The launch server then responds to that HTTP request with the XAPI endpoint, actor, and context. With those details, the content can then utilize the XAPI endpoint in the usual way. With the XAPI actor and context provided in all statements, the launch server will enforce that. When the user is finished with the content, the content sends a final HTTP request to the launch server to terminate the launch. This then invalidates the access token so that it can no longer be used. For example, a user may be finished with the content if they close their browser. So you've got your LRS, you've got your, le your learning provider, and you've got your content all using the launch algorithm. But how do you actually get a launch server? So the ADL have kindly provided a demonstration of how a launch server can be implemented alongside their description of the algorithm. 
However, at HD2 Labs, we like to save you time. So we've created our own implementation and we host this for our clients. If you'd like to find out more about our launch server, you can get in touch by emailing hello at hdtlabs.com. Thank you very much.